Live from the KHOU 11 studios, it's Great Day Houston. And now, here's your host, Deborah Duncan. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Great Day. So, some kids are back to school already. Most of them will be heading back on Monday. A lot of things can impact their performance in school, but one place many of us as parents might overlook is what we pack in their lunchbox. Falling asleep in class, hyperactivity, and trouble concentrating can all be linked to the foods they eat. Joining us to explain, please welcome toxicologist and mom, Dr. Noreen Mayberry. We affectionately call her our Tox Doc. So, welcome her to the show. Hi there. Hi. All right, so yours is already headed back to the classroom. She is. Yes, she started third grade on Monday. Yeah. There Hi, are Nicole. All <laughs> kinds of reasons uh, that kids may not behave well in class. Yes. And, you know, there are some other big issues, but we can start with the basics, and food can be a big impact. Food is an enormous impact. I mean, you know, food and our nutrition controls all of the processes in our body because if your cells don't have what they need, then they can't function properly. Yeah. So you've got to give them the right foundation. And as parents, a lot of us are doing more to find out exactly how we should pack our lunches, you know, what we should give them that's the healthiest. But then sometimes we put them inside of containers like lunch boxes or containers that have chemicals in them, chemical toxicants. Which is really what you study. Um, you're right. not here in the capacity of NASA, but you are no. a toxicologist with NASA. Yes, I am. Yes. And I'm not here, um, you know, representing NASA. But again, it's so important, you know, when we study these chemicals because um, you know, here on Earth, we can open a window, and you know that's great and because die. you've got the dilution yeah, effect. Yeah, open up a window. But <laughs> <laughs> well, can you imagine in space? You can't open up a window, so yeah. you've got to control the chemicals in the environment. Yeah. So what happens here is we're exposed to these chemicals on a chronic basis, long term, and then eventually you see this chronic disease that comes yeah. about. Let's define when we say toxic, because um, mm -hmm. I think people are kind of confused. Uh, mm -hmm. It becomes toxic. Some things aren't toxic in small doses, but mm -hmm. can become toxic in higher doses. Exactly. Other things you just shouldn't be exposed to at all. Yeah, the thing is with toxicology, the dose makes the poison. So some things are highly toxic at very low levels. Some things are not toxic unless you get to really high levels. Also, what matters is the contact time, how long it's in contact with your body and if it gets to the right target sites to create that toxicity. Yeah. All right, so let's back up okay. to what we pack our lunch in. What are the best things to pack our lunches in, whether it's the things that we're drinking or just right. our food and bags? Okay, so what I suggest is if you've got those plastic lunch boxes, Let's not use those. Go out and get the metal, the old school metal mm -hmm. school boxes. I'm going to dig out my Partridge exactly, Family lunchbox. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. They're wonderful. But those plastic school boxes, they have phthalates in them and they are not stable. They're not, they don't stay within the plastic. So they can migrate and they can creep within your child's food and your child's carrying that all year. It's not going to be noticeable, but that's a low level exposure. And again, we're talking chronic. Yeah. We're talking long term exposure, anything more than 24 hours. Okay. okay. So that's what you want to be aware of also some of these really shiny backpacks that have the little plastic labels with the cute little Superman and Disney characters on them. Stay away from those. Use your cloth backpacks. Those are the best option. Okay, so uh, there's a couple of ways we can look at this. One yes. is eating foods that are clean to begin with. So there's exactly. a lot of emphasis on organic. Exactly. Meaning they haven't been exposed to pesticides and yes. some other things. But also eating foods that can help remove some of those things exactly. from our body. Exactly. Vitamin E um, has been one of the most studied antioxidants because it has been shown throughout tons of literature and everything that I put out here I've looked at the literature I've looked at the scientific literature it's got a basis for showing positive health effects getting rid of those oxidants or those free radicals free radicals are changes in the electron bond so you've got a chem chemicals in your body and your body produces free radicals you lose one of those um, electron shells if you remember from chemistry no okay well <laughs> no yes I do I do yeah. so, so what you've got is a dangling bond so that dangling bond wants to be satisfied so it starts interacting with some of your cells and that can be the beginning of cancer because if it adversely affects the way the cellular structure is yeah. then eventually that can lead to chronic diseases you Which don't makes want sense that. that we look at chronic diseases usually show up years later years but the, later. the fight starts when we're the children. fight starts immediately and because we don't see an effect right away we become complacent and we start to eat a lot of these boxed and packaged foods anything that comes really in a box box 
or that's packaged, that's preserved, you want to stay away from eating that because yeah. I'm not saying don't eat it ever again because it would be unrealistic for me to tell the average person that. However, some of us eat that with every single meal. Right. Every single meal comes out of a box. And as you that's mentioned, the good. dosage, just like Dose makes so much sodium nitrate our body right. can handle, but when it's in your breakfast, your lunch, and your dinner, exactly. and each one of those meals are your totals for the day, exactly. that's when you put your body in that fight mode that we yeah. talked about. All right, one place, and it's hard for us because if there's pesticides all over this, I couldn't tell you. I wouldn't know. Right, yeah. So it's very important that you soak these fruits and vegetables when you get them from the store or even from the farmer's market. Um, the best thing to do if you can't go get organic is you get local because not everybody is going to be certified organic, but that doesn't mean it's not grown organically. Here in Houston, there's a lot of great co-ops. There are a lot of people who grow um, locally. Yeah. That, like, even grocery stores that exactly. are getting their fruits, their fruits and vegetables from local growers. Local growers. You want to go local if you can't go organic. You want to soak these in a mostly water, slightly vinegar mixture, and then, you know, rinse them off thoroughly two to three times. Okay. okay? And you, it's amazing the kind of residue that you'll see. But you want to get, you want to go for the full color spectrum. Um, dark leafy vegetables are great, but when we're talking about fruits, tomatoes full of lycopene, full of antioxidants, these reds in this uh, fruit full of antioxidants, kiwi, the red, green, orange peppers, avocado, it's such a superfood. It's got, it's got such a combination of yeah. vitamins and minerals and trace and minerals. This is what we mean by the term nutrient dense. Nutrient and I know dense. Sometimes people get confused by that, but it's like if you eat just a cracker, you haven't gotten the nutrients that your body needs. Not but when at you all. eat things like this, you're getting yeah. stuff that counts, if you will. Food is like medicine, as we always Food say. Food is show. like medicine. And just because that cracker sustains you or doesn't allow you to die, or tastes good, or, or tastes sorry. good, <laughs> that doesn't mean that that's all you should eat. You definitely want to balance. If in an ideal world, and I challenge all of you to do this, start with at least one meal where at least 50% of the plate is fresh, raw fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. At least. Then when you start with one, you know, then move up to two a week. Yeah. Or two per day, actually. Not two a week. Two per day. Then, you know, you can actually get it on every single meal. I'm not going to tell you that you have to go all vegan or you have to go vegetarian, but what I am telling you is that you need a lot more fresh fruits and vegetables to help you counteract all these environmental insults that we get in our air, in our water, at work, at home, in the office, you want to do the best for your yeah, body. Yeah, we, we can't necessarily escape it all. We can no. limit our exposure. Mm -hmm. We can't escape it all, but because we can't escape it, mm -hmm. your point is build your body, make your body strong enough to be able to fight and cleanse exactly. those things. Exactly. And we say cleanse goes through the kidneys, the liver. There's the reason why those things are in our exactly, body. Exactly, exactly. And I was telling you earlier, toxicologists, we don't really eat liver or kidneys because we know what they do. So, or, or intestines. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't recommend eating that. There goes a pot of <laughs> <laughs> And someone will say, well, liver's got a lot of iron, yeah, and a lot of other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about some of those superfoods, yes. if you will, oh that can gosh. help fortify our bodies as so, well. I mean, this is great for a basic part of uh, our nutrition, but some wonderful. other things that do a little extra work. Awesome. Dates, just in one date, you get a cross spectrum of vitamins, minerals, antioxidants. It is high in sugar, but it doesn't have a high glycemic load. So when people are wondering about the sugar content, Content and dates. Dates, you can dehydrate them and make them into a date sugar. It's a great natural sugar substitute. Chia seeds, oh, high that's in a omega date. I can't help myself. Oh, yeah. Hi, you look sweet. Want to go on a date? <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't help myself. That was, that was my right. son's joke. But I'm going to back up to the sugar thing that you talked yes. about because mm -hmm. we have made sugar evil, right? We yes. Said that it, and yes, in excess, of course. Uh, exactly. But there's a difference between the naturally occurring sugars and understanding, like you said, the hypoglycemic index. Yes. Understanding what that amount of sugar may do in your body, especially exactly. for someone who's type 2 diabetic. Exactly. And for those that have type 2 diabetes, I recommend berries. All kinds of berries. Uh, cherries, strawberries, blueberries, raspberries. You know, some people say, oh, not a lot of cherries, but you know what? You can have your cherries. But and definitely too. anything yeah. with a berry on the end, raspberries, blueberries, blackberries, wonderful. Get big cupfuls, and they're not really high in, in the glycemic index. And again, you're eating something fresh that's good for your body. Yeah. Your body knows what it is. Walnuts, All right. absolutely amazing. Chia seeds, Again, high in omega-3. You can actually use them to replace eggs in um, baking. Really? So, yeah, because it, you know you sit it in water and it thickens up. It's absolutely amazing. So, some of you um, fellas and, and ladies who are bakers, send me your uh, send me your recipes. I'd love to feature them on my website. Huh. Walnuts, absolutely amazing. Also high in omega-3. Um, 
That's almonds. why I put these in my chocolate chip cookies all the time. They are absolutely amazing. You know, some people say, well, I don't like the taste of walnuts. Keep eating them. You'll start to love the yeah. taste of walnuts, you know. And if you're eating bitter walnuts, they're rancid. Throw them out. Get fresh walnuts. Almonds, absolutely amazing. The thing about almonds is that it's very hard to get a raw almond that hasn't been sprayed with some type of pesticide. Right. Even organic almonds have some type of spray on them. I talk about that on my Facebook page. Come over and visit me, and you can read all about it. Yeah. Another great. I want to. I, I, I know yeah. almonds. I want to back up on this one because you said the raw almonds. A lot of times mm -hmm. we like the extra taste. Like I had some barbecue mm -hmm. flavored, uh, you know, mm -hmm. roasted almonds mm -hmm. the other day, and of yeah. course I, somehow I just don't think they were on the grill. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, um, when we roast them, the reason why you want them to be raw on any of these things for the most part is where they probably have their most amount of nutrient value. Exactly. And you know, if you want to add your own flavor, you can do that. I mean, I can, you, you can take these raw almonds, you can make a little mixture, a little barbecue spice mixture yourself, toss them in there, you know, real quick yeah. and make your own spiced almonds as opposed to buying them and they've got all kinds of preservatives and other chemicals that are really, yeah, those, those, those mystery flavors. flavors. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. So, uh, kind of like New car smell. Exactly. <laughs> really? um, yeah. Moving on to a couple of other power foods. Yes. And we know broccoli is one of those power foods. Broccoli kale, is a power food. Those types of kale is a yeah. power food. But to get the amount of, of iron you need from your broccoli, you're going to have to eat you know anywhere from six to ten cups a day. Who's going to do that? Yeah. And then you really want it raw because you know once you cook it, you've lost a lot of it. So what I recommend is you juice. Juice your greens. Juice your vegetables. For those of you who don't like vegetables, juice your carrots. Juice your kale. Juice your broccoli. You know, juice uh, juice your tomatoes, juice it all together, add in some fruit for a little natural sweetness. It's wonderful. That's another way. I almost heard you say, wow, I could have had a V8. Yeah, except, <laughs> except <laughs> make yeah. your own V8. Yeah, make your own. Make, make your it own. fresh. <laughs> you know where it came from. Exactly. You know it's fresh. Exactly. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's wonderful. And I absolutely love juicing because if you, if you, can't, if you can't add that 51% to your plate, well, you've done it in breakfast when you juice. Yeah. Okay? Because some people say, well, how do I add 50% Raw food to but my you're breakfast. right. In the juice, plus juice you can it. use the things that you like. You can exactly. tweak the flavors of exactly. it. Exactly. So that you can uh, get it down and One enjoy it. One of my it. favorites for beginners, orange, strawberry, and um, apples. Absolutely lovely. So anyway. Yeah. yeah. Noreen, thank uh -huh. you very thank much you for so the much advice. Thank you so much for having really me. really appreciate it. For more information on Dr. Mayberry's book as well, because in her book, she explains a lot of this. There you go. Talking toxicology so that we all can understand it. And how to decrease your exposure to toxins. You can log on to GreatDayHouston.com and we'll have information there. Well, today on Facebook. Huh? Facebook. Facebook. As many of you know, in some school zones, you can get a ticket for texting. It can be confusing because it's not illegal in every school zone. In some towns, like Grand Prairie, just outside of Dallas, texting anywhere while driving is now against the law. With that said, do you think we need to make it uniform across the board and pass a statewide law to ban texting while driving? Now, some people feel there are bigger distractions to watch out for, like putting makeup on while driving. <laughs> some of you are guilty. You know it. Eating while driving. A lot of us are guilty of that one. And being distracted by your children or pets while driving. Maybe there should just be a distracted while driving law. Log on and let us know what you think about that texting idea, though. We'll share some of your comments a little bit later on in the show. On the fashion runways every season, we see cultural influences from around the world, from the tribal prince of Africa to Native American and Western wear. Up next, we'll show you how your closet can reflect a worldly view. Yeah.